Fact, rumour, scrutiny, suggestion. The Huddle. All right, joining us on The Huddle today, uh, Matthew Tukaki uh, is uh, with us. Hello, Matthew. Kia ora, good to be with you. And Tim Beveridge, who is, well, you're doing every single show on this radio station at the moment, too. <laughs> It's fair oh, to say. Here and there. I heard here you over. I, I heard you overnight, and of course, he's from the Weekend uh, Collective as well. Let's get straight into COVID. 102 new COVID cases today. Uh, it is a record, a record number of hospitalisations. Good news is that ICU stays pretty static. Uh, now we're looking ahead to tomorrow. The Prime Minister making all sorts of statements, including vaccination targets and moving on and moving out. So, Matthew Tukaki, what do you want from tomorrow? Well, I'm hoping we're not going to get a whole lot of squiggly lines on a piece of paper. But I, I'm, I live in Tamaki. I'm looking for certainty. Um, I do not want to see it. Some idiots are now calling, mostly from the South Island, I might add. Uh, and um, quite frankly, I think we're all exhausted. In so some sort of clarity on plan. Uh, I want to see us um, have more freedom of movement ahead of Christmas. Um, and quite frankly, um, we're only going to be able to achieve that if more people get jabs in arms and get vaccinated. So I also want to see more resources and more investment going into, and if we have to, knock on doors suburb to suburb um, to find the elusive, outstanding couple of hundred thousand people. OK, yeah, Matthew, I need to get this. It's quite simple. Do you want a vaccination rate target or do you want a date of a Freedom Day? Well, I wouldn't call it Freedom Day. Um, look, the only vaccination target is to get people, um, you know, vaccinated. Whatever, whatever that, that number is, I'm, I'm not too fussed about, to be frank. I think, though, it has to be over a certain percentage, say, like 90 or whatever. But, you know, this talk about 100% of people needing to be vaccinated. Uh, we've already had the science and discussion about herd immunity. We've already had a discussion about how we already have people out there who are immunocompromised. Uh, and quite frankly, are we talking about 100% of the, or 90% of the eligible population now, or are we talking about those kids who are going to come online with the uh, when they're eligible for the vaccinations? You know, I think we've got to live in real land, not cloud cuckoo land, and um, where all the squiggly lines like to play. I want to just see real, honest, hard. This is how we're going to pull ourselves out of this. Yeah, that call that calls for courage of conviction. So, Tim Beveridge, what do you want from tomorrow? Look, I think the problem is uh, is that when we're talking about the percentages of vaccinated or a particular date, is that it's being framed between sort of two extremes that we're either in lockdown or we're all off the hook. Whereas, in fact, it's a lot more nuanced than that. For me, I want some guidance about the choices that are going to be given to people who are fully vaccinated. I mean, it, it, it dovetails a little bit into the decision we saw in education with kids going back to school. Well, why can't a cafe with fully vaccinated staff have customers with fully vaccinated who are fully vaccinated? And I think so it's not about just releasing the shackles. Um, for me, I think a, a date where we can actually see some policy shifts around people being able to be rewarded for the fact that they're vaccinated, yeah. which ties into what uh, Matthew was talking about, mm -hmm. about going door to door. It's about creating pressure on the remaining people um, who are unvaccinated to get vaccinated. I mean, Auckland, I think yesterday, only less than 3,000 yep. first jabs. Yep. They go, look, Auckland got past a million fully vaccinated today. And so there's a million fully vaccinated people who are yep. sitting at home waiting to, waiting to do something. But the problem is there's no, there's no vaccine passport. There's no vaccine certificate. They can't go out there and prove it. Yep. So it gets all very, very difficult. So there's an awful lot that we're waiting for tomorrow. It will be at 10 a.m. It will be on News Talk ZB. So it's a huddle with Matthew Takaki and also Tim Beveridge. It is 11 minutes to six. So uh, schools got the go-ahead yesterday for senior students to go back uh, next Tuesday. And people have been clamouring and crying for a little bit of certainty and what is going to happen. And then, of course, the government came out and said, you can go back in the PPTA. Well, no, we can't. There's a pandemic on. And so many schools are not going back. Takapuna Grammar says it's too hard. Matthew, did they get it right? Did they get it wrong yesterday? Oh, I think they got it wrong. I think we need to listen to the PPTA and parents and also a large number of teachers as well. I mean, I, I'm married to a teacher. Let me tell you, I, I've never copped it in the air as much as I have in the last 24 hours. <laughs> Um, but the, you know, the reality is we have lost an entire school year uh, and I think it's best that we do everything we can to find a solution to how we are going to get these kids back on their learning journey next year. Uh, we're nearly on the cusp of Christmas, um, whether the fourth term started um, uh, this week or not. Uh, we have lost literally months. We need a plan on how we're going to pick up these kids, get them back on their learning journey, mm -hmm. and we've only got um, a, um, a few weeks uh, to a few months before the new school year next year to do that. 
Yeah, Tim, uh, the schools are actually saying, look, we've had the online learning. We've got also those uh, those credits that they can get if they fail in the, in the exams. We're actually as sorted as we can be. Do you really want to come home? How did you feel about it? Oh, look, I was surprised that it was such a short notice return. Uh, there are a couple of things, given that the teachers had a deadline of November the 15th to be getting their first jab, I think it was. Look, I take an epidemiological sort of view of it that if we're under the restrictions that, that grown-ups are under, regardless of the vaccination status, it just seems to me to be a, a, a really uh, worrisome step in, in having at year 11, 12 and 13 kids of mixed vaccination statuses from tens mm. of thousands of households all going to school together and going back home. And I think Matthew's point about you know the, the larger issues of catch-up and, and inequities that have sprung up over the last few months or yeah. year is uh, is not going to be resolved by flinging kids back into school with a week's notice. To look good to a, to an electorate that is clamouring for freedom, uh, you'd have to say. Yeah, it was a little bit too not, political. that's not the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not the answer. Okay. Hey, so Matthew Takaki, we have a free trade deal with the UK, uh, which is great news. It's a billion dollars. Of course, we're losing one and a half billion every week anyway, but that's another story. Uh, but, but one of the things the UK has signed up to is protecting the haka. Now, you've taken interest in this. How can they do that? Well, well, first of all, I love the free trade agreement, and I must admit I played a role in navigating uh, Māori interests between the UK and uh, and, and MFAT. Um, but look, it, it is a very interesting, unique position we're in. Um, we have a treaty, um, and what we had to do was move to ensure that there was a treaty, what we call the exception clause, um, so we could still do what we need to do in terms of honouring those commitments here in country. But um, there's also the opportunity to further protect our intellectual property. So it's not just the haka. Um, we've seen cultural misappropriation go on around the world for various cultures. Um, and so very practically, this is about protecting our intellectual property in terms of tikanga, in terms of wire to culture and so on. And there's a very practical mechanism we can use to do that, and it's called the World International Property Office, um, which New Zealand has already signed up to. Uh, so it's, it, it might be a bit of a buzzy little news story, but actually the real big deal for Māori is in the fact that digital entrepreneurs where Māori are burgeoning can mm. absolutely increase their opportunities. We are big exporters and big landholders when it comes to agribusiness, so there's benefits all around here. So I actually think it's just not, it's not just a good win for Māori, it's a really big win for New Zealand. Absolutely, and if it stops the Cambridge University Review doing a really, really, really bad Hucker, that's a good thing as well. Final word from you, Tim, on the free trade. Uh, yeah, I don't, it's, it's probably not going to stop the drunken tourist hacker, but look, it's a win win. <laughs> um, the thing that stru- stuck out to me was they talk about the GDP boost of about a billion dollars. Uh, and, and given how much of a big win we're seeing this, it, all it did, did was make me think, my God, we were spending that every week in mm. uh, the early weeks of our lockdown. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's a win win. That They're lucky. Uh, the Brits get to have the terrorists taken off straight away, whereas we've got to wait a little while. But, you know, we'll take what we can get because oh, um, mate, it's oh, good mate, news. We, we are globalists. We have hardly any tariffs. They have heaps. Did you know they were charging us 50 bucks for every 100 litres of uh, wine? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, I mean, <laughs> Tax I'm, away. I'm excited about yeah. the onions one. Yeah, they well. Tariff on onions. Well, it? we <laughs> have the Onion Association joining us on air next hour. So you just wait. Tim Beveridge and Matthew Tukaki. Thought-provoking, opinionated, enlightening. The Leighton Smith Podcast. For 28 years, he was an analyst for the CIA, specialising in foreign news media. He left in 2010, just before the world changed. His book, The Revolt of the Public and the Crisis of Authority, was published in 2014. Martin Goury is not to be missed in 135. Subscribe now on iHeartRadio and get the latest episode now. The Leighton Smith Podcast, powered by Newstalk ZB.